Hi, my name is Dylan, and today's video is about virtual reality. With the popularization of standalone VR headsets like the Quest 2 and Pico 4, the platform has seen rapid growth in recent years. Before these self-tracking headsets hit the market, the only way to set up VR was to hard mount these lighthouse stations or IR cameras for the HTC Vive and Oculus Rift respectively. Since more and more headsets are relying on onboard camera-based tracking independent of these external components, VR is more versatile than it has ever been. People are now even working on an open source model for this standalone tracking method, which could lead to a fully independent DIY headset in the coming years. Personally, I would love to see that. But that's not what this video is about. I'm here to talk about a problem that many new and even experienced VR users now face in wireless PC VR. There are several ways to use your standalone VR headset to play PC VR games wirelessly. One is a first-party streaming client, another is virtual desktop, and another is ALVR. I've tried each of the aforementioned methods and have come to prefer virtual desktop. It's an app developed by Guy Godin for Quest headsets, Pico headsets, and soon the Vive XR Elite. It allows its users to interact with their PC over a local network, bringing their screen into a virtual space. But that's not all. It integrates with SteamVR and the Oculus PC software. Just open the games menu in Virtual Desktop and choose what you want to play. Boom, you're playing Gorilla Tag, VR Chat, Half-Life 2 VR Mod, Kayak VR Mirage, Beat Saber, Blade and Sorcery, Boneworks, the list goes on and on. But remember how I said Virtual Desktop sends the video data over the local network? Well, this is also how Questlink Wireless and ALVR work, and this is where new users can run into problems. For any of these wireless methods to work properly, Questlink, Pico Streaming Assistant, Vibe Streaming, for any of those wireless methods to work properly, the PC has to be connected to a router by an ethernet cable. There is a long form explanation of this, but I'll give you the abridged version. Wi-Fi can't send and receive data simultaneously or communicate with more than one device at a time. A typical home Wi-Fi router constantly cycles between devices and switches between sending and receiving packets of data. It's able to do this extremely rapidly, which is why you can download stuff at full speed while your family is watching murder mysteries on Prime Video downstairs and your dog is watching videos of birds on the tablet. Wait a second. All jokes aside, the router is doing this extremely fast, but when it has to send real-time, high-resolution, high-frame-rate video data, which requires larger than typical data packets, Having to send and receive that data so rapidly causes the signal to choke out and the packet data to be lost in space. And believe it or not, that's as brief an explanation as I can give while keeping it simple and is my understanding of how it works. Ask any of the volunteers over in the virtual desktop Discord server and they'll tell you essentially the same thing. This is the reason virtual desktop and any wireless VR methods as of today requires an ethernet cable to the router. Additionally, it is recommended to use a dedicated router that connects solely to your PC and headset and set up in the same room that you play VR in, as shown in this diagram. This removes the requirement of the Wi-Fi having to receive and to send the video data at the same time, since it's receiving that data now through the Ethernet switch, which is faster and more reliable. Unfortunately for many users, including myself, running a cable from the VR room to the router of the house is not very feasible. Sometimes it requires holes to be drilled or maybe the router is too far away or even on another floor. The good news is, even in a situation where an ethernet cable to the main router is not feasible, you still have options. I titled the video The Wireless VR Problem and How to Fix It for a Reason. And the solution is less expensive than you might think. Around the same time that I tried the D-Link AirBridge, which is an overpriced USB Wi-Fi dongle that requires the Oculus software and is completely meta-controlled, 
Some discussion was happening on the virtual desktop Discord about a travel-friendly wireless repeater router called the GL iNet Opal. A $40 router that can connect to your home network wirelessly and provide an internet connection to the PC over Ethernet and the headset over Wi-Fi? No cable to the main router necessary? I was pretty skeptical about it at first, but I decided to give it a shot anyway. I got some significant money back by returning the AirBridge because it was over twice the price of the Opal. When I got the Opal, I immediately got to work setting it up and as stated before, I connected it to my PC with an Ethernet cable. And it actually comes with one of these, but I needed some extra length, so I grabbed a Cat6 Best Buy cable I had laying around. I went ahead and gave the router a specific set of Wi-Fi credentials for my Quest 2 to log into, and as soon as I connected the Opal to my home Wi-Fi and connected the headset to the Opal's Wi-Fi, the Quest 2 got its internet connection as expected. I launched Virtual Desktop and started up Beat Saber to benchmark the speed of the connection, and being that it was a Wi-Fi 5 router, I didn't have high expectations. Which was why I was blown away when I realized it was on par with link cable speeds. I mean, obviously since it is Wi-Fi, it can get interference depending on the situation, so your mileage might vary, but I was just shocked at how well it ran. Over a couple of months, I continued to test the router, and without boring you with any of the technical details on how I arrived at this conclusion, I found it best to connect it to my home Wi-Fi over a 5 GHz connection using repeater mode. This allowed me to both use VR and access all the fun features of the router, even the VPN protocol. And there you have it. The short answer to the wireless PC VR problem is to use an Ethernet cable to connect your PC and router. But we understand on the virtual desktop Discord that a fully wired internet connection isn't possible for some users, which is the main reason this video exists. I wanted to spread the word about this router because it has the potential to bring the wireless VR experience to even more people. Other routers are of course capable of this wireless repeater function, but the Opal is the most affordable one I'm aware of and is the easiest by far to set up, so I'll be uploading a full tutorial on it soon. As you can probably tell, I love VR and I want more people to be able to experience the platform for all the good things it has to offer. And the best way to experience it, in my opinion, is without the restriction of a headset cable. But for now, that's all I have time for. Thank you very much for watching. Get subscribed if you're interested in that setup tutorial I mentioned earlier, and I'll soon have another video about full body tracking, with the star of the show being Slime VR. Until then, have yourself a good day.